Cal Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today I'm with my really great friend Tyler Lloyd from Overheard. And uh, right now we're on our way going to uh, the Compass and uh, to spread the message of freedom. But along the way, we thought to uh, stop by here and take a look at this uh, this threat by the uh, city government of Richmond. Uh, you know, this threat is about ten thousand dollars. I guess it's thirty-five dollars for a sober ride. Sure, that's 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 nice. I'm sure, but you look at the uh, the threat here is ten thousand dollar extortion, uh, which kind of reminds me of the <laughs> the ABC extortion uh, squad that came out in uh, uh, th th pretty much threatened the life of this uh, young girl in Charlottesville. She was. Uh, just coming out of a, a liquor store, she has some sparkling water, uh, half a dozen men and a young woman, uh, uh, I guess in undercover clothing, uh, approached her, you know, with their arms uh, reaching for their weapon and started running towards her. Uh, she, just, of course, started to freak out. She, she's uh, not unsure what's really going on in this situation, so she runs for her car. Uh, these extortion, these ABC extortion thugs then threw themselves onto her car, tried to break the window. Um, and of course she's freaking out. She has no idea what's going on. Um, and then it turns out later when they tried to address, you know, what, what really was going on, they still charged her uh, with felony crimes. You know, I think one was, uh, was with attempted murder or attempted to, to injure an, an officer. Um, and of course the, the charges were later dismissed because they were frivolous. You know, they're the ones who were initiating that violence. They're the ones who came out to uh, attack her as undercover uh, extortion thugs. Uh, and just recently here at VCU, there was another police officer, state trooper, that uh, attempted an uh, attempted murder towards a kid riding on his skateboard in front of the uh, what, the VCU halls. Yeah, yeah, the residence halls. That was right there on um, Franklin and Belvedere. It's yeah. really sad because you can't make a U-turn there. It's stupid. Like you shouldn't be doing that. But I guess they don't have to follow the traffic laws either. Yeah, the rules only apply yeah. to us tax slaves. That we fail to respect their authority. Like I think they have the same amount of authority that this shirt gives me. Yeah. As the individual. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't need no badge, dude. You just happen to have a gun. Yeah. If the situations were reversed, uh, yeah, that 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 uh, the young adult would have been uh, charged with attempted murder. Uh, but because he wasn't wearing a costume and and uh, he himself is the tax cattle you know um, not, nothing else was kind of pursued after that so right now we're gonna head over to the compass and uh, come join us I always like to cook better and that's and that's the hidden violence the immorality of that so yeah. what are your thoughts on uh, on that now um that wasn't what I was expecting to hear. Um, I thought you were gonna persuade me to um, join a third party or something, but um, I'm not sure. I I, uh, I think that what the uh, questions you asked me was how any college student would have answered, and um, I don't think it's right to be threatened one way or another. Um, I'm not particularly for guns, um, so. I don't really like the way that the U.S. government tries to handle things some ways, both domestic and international. Yeah, uh, you have Obama drone bombing children overseas, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Here they're called the uh, the incident in Boston a terrorist attack, but overseas they just oh. call it collateral damage. Yeah. You know, they just call it by a different word. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you were mentioning earlier, yeah, uh, so we're part of an organization called Liberty RV. It's a non-political organization. I will look you guys up on YouTube. Yeah. Sounds very interesting. Thank you, thank um. you, I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> well, hey, let me give you a pamphlet then. Oh, sure. Yeah, so this idea, this philosophy is uh, called anarchy. Oh, and uh, yeah. so by definition, it just means without rulers. Like in science, it means oh, anions yeah. and cations. And means without, archy means rulers. I'm into anarchy. You're into anarchy? Kind of. Kind I know, of. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> but what, do you, what, what, what have you heard about anarchy? What, what well, kind of stuff? Um, not, uh, just, just the word, not the uh, actual uh, formless government. But uh, I, I usually enjoy, like, um, because I like entropy, I feel that it just naturally exists, that things tend to go to dis disorder. Mm -hmm. I'm not really in favor of a really, really tightly organized government, which right. I feel is how things are done these days. Yeah, yeah, it, it brings us nothing but that chaos. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so we may as well kind of embrace it. Yeah, yeah, um, well, try yeah, to make well, something of it. It right. gives us opportunity. Yeah, yeah, for me, this opportunity, you look at Detroit, where it's filed for bankruptcy, and yeah. that was government run. Mm -hmm. And it, it turns in this entire community, the city, into chaos. It's yeah. gone. Uh, yeah, and, and that's it. anarchy <laughs> is, is the opposite of that. Anarchy is order. Anarchy means rules without rulers. Right. You know, we can have rules. We can have communities of preferences. And going back to the cannabis example, we can have like an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. 
You know, we can kind of coexist with these preferences and not forcing one preference overarching onto everyone, regularly yeah. they believe it or not. And of course, and that's the only way government knows how to solve any problems, you know? Yeah. Oh, but it's a pleasure. What's your name again? I am Andrew. Nice Andrew, to meet pleasure you. to meet you. I'm, my name is Cal. This is my friend Tyler. Cal? Nice you. Tyler, yes. nice to meet you. Awesome. All right, great, man. Uh, yeah, check us out. Uh, we're online. We meet monthly. We do a lot of philosophical discussions cool and trying too. to turn to our community and turning away from government and trying to solve our our problems, uh, our problems here yep. in Richmond. All right. All right, well, cool, man. It was good talking to you. You too, man. Nice to meet you, Cal. Good as well. Take care. See you around. Stay out of politics. <laughs> Stay out of politics. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it. That's the, it, it contradicts that which we already do in our lives. It contradicts our own virtues. Uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I, I agree with you to an extent. Uh, I do feel like there are scenarios where um, maybe not violence itself, but the threat of violence can be useful in scenarios. Uh, a perfect example of that would be Cold War with Russia. I mean, Russia was definitely going to attack us if we didn't keep that policy of deterrence. Mm -hmm. So there are scenarios where I believe the government using threat of violence can be useful given the right circumstances. But on day to day life, like you were saying, with cannabis and, and, and small things like that, uh, you know, that's over the top. There's no reason for it. Um, but I don't know, like, there, there's a, a line and it's hard to really identify where that line is located on. At what point do you bring out the gun and say you need to stop? Right. Um, and so, you know, I definitely do not believe that I'm the one to make that call. I'm not sure anyone really has. Thank you. Yeah. The, the point to make that. I believe the that what we can do is just come up with our best guess. It's obvious that the government's not doing it right, but there, someone does need to try and figure out the gray line. But right. I'm not I, sure I, I that anyone can do it. Right. And that's and that's why for me, uh, let's not give the gun to anyone. You know, let's turn yeah. to our community then and turn away from government. Right? In our own community, we can find these creative nonviolent solutions to solve you know, the problem. You know, but you look at the reality of the situation, and I think that's very important to understand about government, is that they have a monopoly on roads. They have a monopoly on schools. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, and on security. Yeah. Right? You don't have the freedom to, to compete. Yeah. Uh, you don't have the freedom to provide even a better service that's not going to be abusive and harmful to the people that are paying their salaries. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, it's like on top of that, uh, one of the things I'm really advocate about is uh, increasing funding for NASA. Because right. right now it's uh, four tenths of a penny of every tax dollar that goes to NASA. Yeah, yeah. But the amount of money that goes into the war economy and to funding things like you're saying with uh, police force and everything like that, it's so much higher than that and so not needed. Mm -hmm. And if you take that money and you send it somewhere like NASA, then it inspires people to try and think outside the world. With, for instance, um, Doctors Without Borders. Mm -hmm. That term wasn't even an actual term until we got that first picture of Earth from the moon. Because what right. we saw was there was no political lines. The countries weren't colored in. Yeah, in, in reality, objectively, there's no such thing as countries. Right. Countries are nothing more than arbitrary lines on a piece of paper. And so if, if you send your resources somewhere else, to a more educational area, to a more something that helps the community better than just saying, follow the rules, follow the rules, follow the rules, you'll get a much better society around you. But it's not just a single country or government that has to do that. I think all of the governments have to do that before it really becomes effective. I, I don't, and I find that to be kind of, to be honest, Im impossible. Uh, yeah. Because again, they have a monopoly on the space agency program, right? Yeah. Uh, again, you have you have some uh, companies trying to compete. I mean, Red Bull has like better space program now than NASA. Yeah. But because in the beginning, when they monopolized the space program, NASA, uh, you, you steal as much wealth from people to to fund these these uh, creative uh, technologies that that came out decades ago. But that was mm -hmm. a long time ago now, right? You know, when was the last time we were on the moon? Right, and you, well, so they're still using the same space shuttles, right? Yeah. So you get all, uh, all this awesome stuff. Well, no, actually, we're not using the same space shuttles. We, I, I guess they just, they're just finally retarded or retarded. But after so long using the same one, after they start exploding, you never really had that problem in the in the, in the first couple of years when NASA was formed. Oh, and everything you had was, that you, problem a lot. You had the, you had top scientists. You had a, you had pretty much the best of the best coming together. But again, like with any monopoly, the quality always goes down. Yeah. Uh, and even, I mean, and for me, I, I mean, my, my father used to work for NASA. You know, mm -hmm. he used to work for the Goddard Space Telescope and all that stuff. So yeah. for me, uh, again, happens is that whenever you have a monopoly on anything, though, um, you know, not just the quality will go down, it just becomes unsustainable. Yeah. Um, you look at the city of Detroit, you know, it's, it's filed for bankruptcy. Yeah. Right. And that's the nature of every single government. There's not enough wealth to steal. To keep funding these uh, these organizations, these these services, yeah. you know, like social security, we'll never have that in our life. Yeah. You know, and for me, I, yeah, I want to go to the moon. I want to keep going farther. You know, where no man and free woman or child has ever gone before. Yeah. That's the direction where I want to go. 
but that could be better self-serve in, in, in a free and voluntary society yeah. you know your 40 50 percent of your income that's not stolen could be better directed at least for you efficiently and more directly yeah. and in that area yeah you know yeah, I, I mean like one of the things i believe would be a great thing is if instead of just collecting the tax money you know maybe you could say yes uh, this is how much you have to pay, but then the person decides with where, where that money is allocated. Then that wouldn't be called taxes. Then that would just be called uh, you actually allocating your own resources. Right, but but the idea would be it almost be a forced allocation. And and my belief, I don't know if this is true or not. I'm not a philosopher, but yeah. my belief would be if you did that for everyone, then what you would find is when if something started to go into decay, then everyone would try and push that back up. So it would be self-sustaining itself, and you wouldn't have. You know, people in Congress coming up with these ideas of where money needs to be spent when it really doesn't need to be spent there. It needs to be put somewhere else because Congress is sitting on their high and mighty pedestal over there. They don't see what's going on around. Yeah, yeah, they're not. They're not uh, professional in the areas of understanding, uh, like, yeah. a, I guess, uh, physics or anything like that. Yeah. But I guess I want to go back to taxation. For me, that's a very important point to talk about this because it, it, is, it is theft. It is theft at gunpoint, yeah. you know? And like, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, you, you can't say, like, I mean, these are great government services, but, you know, who you feel comfortable taking the gun, you know, and pointing it to friends or families is, you know, it's for the greater good. Yeah. You know, uh, when you understand like the utilitarian principle, it's the greatest good for the majority, but it's also the greatest good for the minority. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I feel honestly that we, we can be, we can achieve that end through voluntary means. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, we we don't need taxes. People, I mean, for example, like people say, you know, I, I hear a lot of people want to go to NASA for the same way. Like people say, what about the poor? It's great that people always ask that question because it implies that they care about the poor. And yeah. people like you who care about space and exploration, there there are always going to be people who are going to be asking those same questions, and those are the people who are going to find better and uh, non-violent violent ways and means to to find efficient ways to oh, keep yeah. going, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess for, for me, I guess in that direction, I just want to do away uh, with the idea of a government altogether. You look mm -hmm. back like you're mentioning the satellite pictures on Earth and you don't see countries, right? Yeah. Uh, in the same way, you can't show me your friends, your family, or even, you can't even show me government without showing me individual people, yeah. right? Only individual people exist. Yeah. And that's where, I guess, where we're trying to go, to turn to the individual people here in our community and turn away from that that, that doesn't know how to yeah. Yeah, how to use the resources well, that they know, steal from I don't, here. I don't think government necessarily has to be completely abolished, but I believe a skeleton government would be necessary. All right, okay, so uh, we can still have rules, Yeah. right? We can still have rules, but for yeah. me, we just don't need the political rulers. Yeah. We can have communities of preferences, you know? Yeah. We can have an apartment complex that's four Twenty friendly, one across the street that's not. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it, I mean, I think that's that's a wonderful idea. Yeah, and, and that's and that's it. I mean, the, the, yeah. the only thing that exists is like uh, we're talking about NASA. So NASA kind of deals with like objective evidence, right? There's just yeah. no objective evidence that government exists, though, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, you can't you can't show me. You'll show me a White House in D.C. Someone in a green costume holding a gun. Someone in a blue costume holding a gun. Yeah. Right. And so you know, for me, it's, it's, we have to go look at this objectively. And you look at taxation; it's nothing but theft. And when you have 40-50% of the income returned back to you, you can better fund, better programs, better better services that can yeah. achieve, uh, I guess, the end goal, you know, yeah. uh, that, that you desire. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I guess, uh, no, I appreciate you talking. I appreciate this. Yeah, no, no, no thanks problem. for your perspective, man. Did you want to fly or something? Yeah, yeah, let me give you a part So, what we advocate for is uh, anarchy. Uh, by definition, it means without rulers. Like in yeah. science, anions and cations, and means without. Archy means rulers. Yeah. So, without rulers. Like monarchy means one ruler, um, anarchy just means a free and voluntary society. Yep. You know, we, we can go finally to, to that place. I mean, for me, I, I, I look at the same thing with the moon, but like how long ago was that? Yeah. You know, decades ago. Uh, and they're, they're already losing a lot of public funding because it's, it's just unsustainable. Yeah. You know, eventually uh, every government run services becomes the way of Detroit. Yeah. But you look at Detroit, for example, uh, so like the security has fallen. Uh, there's private security now. Uh, people are voluntarily paying for the security. And these securities are, are protecting these neighborhoods. They're not throwing yeah. anyone in a cage for a victimless crime. Yeah. You know, uh, there's this guy for like mass transit system. There's this guy who bought these four buses, painted them to reflect the geographic regions of, the, of Detroit. And these buses are, are not centralized planned. They'll pick you up wherever you are. Text them, call them. Uh, there, there's music on these buses. There's Wi-Fi on these buses. There's BYOB because the government no longer has a monopoly on law to enforce. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's 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 like that's fun. Yeah. You know. You know, it, the only thing is that like, if you. The world is not, you know, black or white, so it's definitely a gray area. So the only thing is when you destroy certain circumstances like this, like push the buses, that works now, but someone will abuse it. You're always going to have somebody who's going to try and abuse the system. We, and also, that doesn't matter if you have big government, small government, no government. Oh, okay. Someone's going to abuse it. Right, so, like, uh, I guess a lot of this abuse, like, uh, like for example, like in a free market. Uh, all right, here's an area where it works. Uh, eBay is a great example. Someone who provides a fast service. 
someone who abuses their customers, uh, someone who doesn't provide the terms of terms of contract agreements, uh, they will no longer get businesses on, on eBay. They would be rated down. And then you have a free market for someone to say, well, I'll do business with me because I won't rip you off. I'll yeah. give you a guarantee. You know, at least they have a free market competition yeah. to provide a better service. And that will keep escalating uh, to, to that better place. Yeah, and I, th I think over time it will definitely, you know, sort itself yeah, out. Yeah. But it's just my concern would be during that initial stage, when you haven't figured out a way to root out the abusers, or you, you haven't gotten some system in place uh, that just naturally occurs, you know, that fixes the situation. Yeah. It's like, what, what do we deal that's, with in that time? That's, that's a great point. And, uh, yeah. and, and so we meet monthly. Uh, we have a philosophy group that we meet every month and trying to mm -hmm. actually find solutions to that. Uh, okay. Trying to grind to get to that point of place to having rules without rulers. Uh, no, I would really love for you to come join us. My name yeah. is Cal, by the way. Yeah, Bobby. Bobby, pleasure to meet you, Bobby. Yeah. This is my friend Tyler. Tyler. Nice to meet you. And uh, again, thanks for your perspective. Yeah, no yeah no, this is great, man. What time do you all meet on that? Uh, we're gonna actually going to meet uh, the last Friday of this month, the 30th okay. of August. Uh, and we're like less than a five minute bike ride away from here. All right, awesome. So, yeah, no, it's a pleasure to meet you, Bobby. Yeah. You take good care. Yeah, Grab a good one. Page. And that's, and that's the hidden violence behind the government, and that the government only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Oh, yeah. And, so, uh, and, that, and that's it. That's, that's uh, the immorality. Well, what are your thoughts? So I guess uh, my, the greatest question I have is how you really solve that issue on a large scale because when it comes to interpersonal relations and on a small scale or small communities, Dealing with nonviolent measures to communicate or interact with each other seems like it's a lot more practical, easier to implement than it is on a large, grand scale, say, like with the government. So, have you thought about what are your thoughts in terms of how you would apply nonviolence as a governing, a governing body? Uh, okay, I guess for me, uh, I guess going back to like even the definition of anarchy, so we can still have rules. There's just no need for political rulers, right? We can have communities of preferences. You know, we can we can have an apartment complex building that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. And, and you, you don't know? believe they're limited to scale? Yeah, what well, yeah, yeah. So you can have a rich variety of a creative, uh, interesting uh, communities based on those preferences, based on the rules that people agree to. And then, you know, and, and they'd be voluntary. So, you know, if I don't like this uh, community, uh, maybe I'll go to that nudist community over there, you know? So you, you'd colonize around ideas. Yeah, pretty much. So yeah. it'd, it'd just be kind of segmented into micro, micro communities. Yeah, I guess micro competing communities to, to I guess uh, to for like the kind of lifestyle, the kind of uh, kind of life you want to live, um, and and and, and these, these things will kind of be interactive. You know, you'd have a, a freedom of travel, you have a freedom of interaction, a, a freedom to trade, uh, without the monopoly on roads, without the monopoly the government has on security, on schools, on um, on courts and judges. Uh, you can have polycentric law. Right, and uh, and and that's and that's the direction I guess I'm I'm trying to tell my community to go to turn to our community and turn away from government. You know, um, you know. So what if they legalize cannabis tomorrow? You know, how long did that take? Right, 75 years is not a measure of success. To find game one scrap of our freedom to smoke a plant, but to have lost so many others in the same amount of time. It's certainly slow moving. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and that's, moving. yeah. And for me, I feel like that's why people say, well, change takes so long. Yeah, if you try to do it through government, it's never worked. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be uh, you know 80 years old still holding a sign, still begging to be free. You know, and uh, and that's and that's what we're trying to do here, liberate RBA. And I guess going back to the interpersonal uh, relationships. I mean, for me, that's kind of where it starts. You know, change doesn't start in the White House in D.C. It doesn't start in countries you've never been to. You know, it starts with ourselves. Yeah, at home and in, in our own community. Yep. You know, and it's not just against state violence. It has to be against the violence to each other, and especially the violence is on the children. Uh, spanking children, for example, it teaches them that violence is the way to solve problems when they grow up in this world. And that, and, and in turn, kind of sets up the the acceptance of a government. You know, uh, like for for example, like a child gets mad. Uh, for for asking questions, you know, of course the authority figure will say, "Oh, because I said so." Uh, like I'm expected. Yeah, yeah, they expect it. Yeah, not to question authority, and they mention when they grow up, and people don't question government, you know, or or the wise, or why they even have a monopoly on first class mail, 
right? Instead of having uh, the freedom to compete and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to the people that are paying their salaries. You know, it's been interesting. Uh, it seems like over the past few years, I've noticed more and more change about people, regardless of whatever side they, they decide to go with, um, kind of calling out the government and finding things to be unhappy about with the government and questioning more things. But it seems like the focus is instead of being on the government itself, is rather against the opposing parties. So it's, it's just such a distraction. It just seems so silly to me. It just it divides us. It becomes like that. Like it's, you know, so it's, uh, it's a political warfare at that point. You know, <laughs> political teams. And and for me about anarchy is it's not a political position. You know, no more than atheism is a religious belief. And for me, like let, let's let go of the idea of politics. Let, let's let go of the idea of the illusion that voting will set us free. That we have to beg. You know, because otherwise that, that tells us that we were not born to free to, to begin with here and by our government. You know, we're born to them. We're nothing but tax cattle. You know, to them this imaginary, fictionary, arbitrary line of Virginia is nothing but a tax form to them. Also, within journalism, the way you actually get your information out, the way media is represented, it's very partisan. And again, that's not a political issue. People just need to know, yeah, what the government's doing. Transparency will kind of absolve a lot of these problems. That's a cool tattoo, man. When yeah, did you can, get that? Can we get the... Yeah, can, on the, yeah sure. On the, it's awesome, man. Thank a lot you. Of cool tattoos. I, uh, I got it done by... Let's see, I can't see... There you go. Turn it more... Oh, I guess do it's it this easier, way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sweet, man. There that you go. Sweet, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and that is awesome, man. Yeah, thanks. Check out, like, what do you have here? Oh, yeah, walk and wait. Walk and wait. What does that mean to you? Uh, so, I've always been a uh, really decisive person. Um, and a few years ago, I was struggling with uh, drug addiction. And it ended up making me incredibly indecisive and insecure. Uh, and hurt a lot of people. There are a lot of things I'm not too proud of now, embarrassing things, etc. Uh, and I've always been a pretty reflective person. Um, and I woke up one day and I realized that uh, I, had, I had lost the ability to make decisions for myself. And I felt like I lost control of everything. And um, it was powerful enough. And I was just waking up and finding like this identity that you've accumulated and crafted over however many years, waking up to find that gone. Just the sudden realization was just really powerful. It's really refreshing, I imagine. And I'm glad to hear your story. Where, where do you feel now? Where do you feel today, since then? Where do I feel? Yeah. How do you feel about your, your identity now? Uh, much much more grounded. Yeah? Much more grounded. What do you uh, study? storm is past. <laughs> yeah. What are you studying? Uh, I don't go to school. Okay. So I uh, actually skipped college. I couldn't, just couldn't do it. Um, and just went right to work. I've always been interested in computers. So I got uh, started in web design, graphic design, and now I build websites. Nice, locations. nice. Yeah. <laughs> the free market, yeah. yeah. I enjoyed it a lot. I like the skeleton as well, man. Thanks. That's, that's cool. Thanks. That's cool. All right, you know, this is great, man. My name is Cal, by the way. Nice to meet you, man. I'm Joey. Joey, pleasure to meet you. This is my friend Tyler. Tyler. Nice to meet you, Todd. Uh, I guess before uh, I catch you, before you leave, uh, well, I guess I always pass out these pamphlets uh, to kind of help. I mean, that's, so that's the main point. How do we get to there? You, we kind of have to let go of the idea of government. You know, there's no, there's no actually evidence or facts that it, that it actually really exists. You know, it's, you can't show me your friends, your family, or, or government without showing me individual people, right? And so, I guess the direction I want to go to is in a direction founded on uh, principles of a philosophy that's founded on, on this nonviolence, you know, on real virtues, real values, uh, not the one that kind of compromises our own and tricks us into playing into the matrix, you know? Uh, well, so here we go. Thank you, thank you. I th so I thought it was interesting um, that you pointed out the, uh, the kind of micro scale involved with anarchism and community and how it would work under anarchism. But I still find myself wondering what would happen on a large scale. Are all methods of control or like any type of governance, is it impossible on a larger scale? I you find so many differences in culture and yeah. ideologies. How do you manage that? Is uh, mi are micro cultures or micro communities really the answer? I guess it'll be kind of spontaneous order. I guess in, in that uh, effect. Uh, I mean, you look at uh, of course you look at the fallen city of Detroit now that's fallen for bankruptcy, uh, and that's that's inevitable. That happens to every government controlled city. Uh, like a row of dominoes is happening all over Europe. There's several that's falling for bankruptcy in uh, California. But outside of the, the ending of that chaos of government, uh, you have interesting things that come out of that. Uh, so you have like private security coming out in Detroit, uh, someone providing real security to the neighborhoods, um, and then people are voluntarily paying for that. 
time. They feel more protected and safe by this private security than they do with the police that stop responding to 911 calls to have like an hour response time uh, because it becomes unsustainable. You know, there's no more uh, wealth to steal to keep funding these government services. Um, not only does the quality always goes bad, of course, with that, but you look at like even mass transit systems shut down. But outside of that, there's this 25-year-old um, a uh, young, young adult who, who bought these four buses. Painting these buses to represent the geographic regions of Detroit, and these buses will pick you up wherever you are. Call them, text them. Uh, there's no taxis. Yeah, so they're, they're, not, they're not centralized planning routes, you know, that cater to like political voters. Uh, so, and these buses have Wi-Fi. These buses have music. These buses have BYOB, because the uh, city government of Detroit stopped enforcing their monopoly on law. You know, Why I'm, even get off here? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, for me, that's the direction of where I want to go. Creative nonviolent solutions, you know, that, that would be fun. I mean, I, that would make me want to ride the bus, you know? Uh, I mean, but you look, of course, they have a monopoly on roads, they have a monopoly on transportation, and it always goes, you know, sold to the lowest bidder to, to construct that. The government doesn't build anything. They just kind of outsource right. that to, to, to the companies. Also, otherwise. if you have, like, these voluntary membranes between communities, you're not going to have, like, cultural division isn't exactly the same as, like, cultural conquest. So it wouldn't all be considered in America and you'd be considered a Richmonder until you wanted to rename your part of the city, you wanted to do your own thing. And that's yeah. mostly what I think we're here to update. I think the device that comes from the politics, right? Like you were mentioning earlier, yeah, the political teams. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is fun. This is great. Uh, so we, we actually meet up every month. We do freedom gatherings. Yeah, um, I see you guys out here all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I see you at a calendar. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, is the website here? Yeah, the website's awesome. on there. Everything's on there. Yeah, all it's right. a pleasure yeah. to meet you. So yeah, much you a pleasure. Please. Take good care. Well, uh, thank you so much for watching these videos. Uh, thank you so much for, for enjoying this content. Please share, subscribe, and uh, donate if you can, please. Uh, fund better equipment and to continue doing this as much as possible outdoors. And remember to respect my authority as an individual. That's right. Liberate RVA. Peace.